Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be having some fun with COBOL. If you may remember in my previous video, M46, uh, the one about PL1, um, we had run a 50 year old PL1 compiler called the PL1F compiler. By the way, F stands for 64 kilobyte because IBM wanted to fit the compiler in 64 kilobytes of, of uh, memory in their earliest uh, computers and which they succeeded in doing and uh, they also had a d version which stand which stood for 16 kilobytes uh, so i had a pl1 compiler fit in 16 kilobytes as well but anyway and then we compared it to a, a to a, a 40 year um, younger uh, compiler the ibm enterprise compiler compiled for pl1 and we saw that the pl1 compiler was much faster and uh, uh, but the exact same source code uh, was, was compatible with both with both compilers. And today we're going to be looking at COBOL. So um, in MVT, in TK4, um, MVS 3.8 TK4, we have a compiler called the OSVS compiler, which is a, a compiler that IBM released together with OS 360, I think in about 1966 or early 1967. Uh, because at the time, of course, it would have been unthinkable to release a, uh, an operating system that IBM would release an operating system without a COBOL compiler. And, uh, and still today, it's kind of unthinkable for IBM to have a compiler, not have a, a COBOL compiler for their mainframe operating system. And, um, and so I have the source code. Um, so uh, actually, we can stay here um, in, the, in the spool viewer. But um, we're going to be looking at the source code that we're going to be running, the COBOL source code. It's, um, it's a prime number generator written by this gentleman here, Peter Motter, and updated by Jürgen Winkelmann. Uh, this is the same gentleman who is the maintainer of uh, TK4. Um, and you can see here, this is very old Co uh, COBOL style, but uh, runs fine. And, um, and so it just calculates um, prime numbers it tries to find out if prime numbers are um, if the number that it's counting is a prime number or not um, it reads in uh, from sysn um, that's where the where it reads in and um, and it's a very simple program so this is what we're going to be compiling and then I have uh, two JCLs one for the MVT COBOL compiler. If you remember what I did is I'm running on ZOS here because um, I had asked for access to uh, modern ZOS systems and three gentlemen came forward, uh, one with a system here in the US um, uh, and, and then one person came forward with a ZOS system which I think is running in India, I'm not sure. And some people told me that's a development system and this is what we're running on here right now. And I also installed my um, Rec price monitor, uh, IMON monitor to see what's running on the system. And then I also have access to an older OS 390 system in China, which I haven't played too much with yet because um, I don't want to be working in too many systems. I also don't know how long this gentleman will give me access to the systems. They may revoke me at any time, so I'm not going to be spreading out too much, but I'm going to be working with this system and another ZOS system here in the US. Um, and so I if you remember, I installed uh, the TK4 compilers um, on uh, on the ZOS system, which is the PL1F compiler, the COBOL compiler, Algol, Pascal, Simula, RPG. It's all installed in the system. <laughs> <clears throat> and so since it's installed in a little strange way, um, I, I resort to using a lot of step libraries. Um, so it compiles against the libraries that this compiler needs, which are the very ancient uh, compilers. Um, so this is the JCL here. Um, this does compile link and go. Um, and uh, reads in the source from uh, Moshik's work, Prog uh, Co-Prime. And then um, it compiles it, then it link edits it. Um, I can make it a little easier to read. Okay, and so compile link edge, linkage editor using a very old linkage editor, which we found out in the previous video. If you remember, by accident, I discovered that I was using a linkage editor from the 70s, a very old one, which came with the with the compilers from MB, from TK4. 
Um, I had uh, by accident there was a linkage error in there, and I have been using it. And the in the output, I saw that I had a linkage error um, message from 1977. Um, so I'm doing the same thing here again, just with like we did for um, for the PL1 stuff, and then um, we go and execute it um, in um, uh, in the Go step. Um, and here is the here is the um, the sys and the, the the input to the COBOL compiler. So we'll do 10,000 prime numbers, up, prime numbers up to 10,000. And let's run it and see what happens. So this is Moshix V for MVT, um, or we can call it like uh, T for MVT, okay. And let's run it, job 13, 15. Okay, end it with maximum return code zero. Already, that's quite interesting to run a 50-year-old compiler on a modern ZOS system. Um, and here it is. So this ran. It compiled fine. By the way, you can see here the uh, OS standard COBOL compiler. So this is from night for May 1st, 1972. Um, it took it in and compiled it and printed out the first prime numbers up to 10,000, of which there are 1229. Um, and let's see the execution time of this, um, the go step uh, is here. So start at um, 1358. So this took about uh, three tenths of a second to execute. Um, See here, yeah, three tenths of a second, and so now we're going to com um, compare it with the ZOS Enterprise COBOL compiler version 3.4, which is about a nine-year-old compiler, but still plenty good. Obviously, vastly superior to the to this 50-year-old compiler here from 19 uh, or oh, this 46-year-old compiler. Uh, but it was initially released in the 60s, so um, level 78, I think, is the last release of this compiler. Um, so uh, as you can see here, and then we have the linkage editor step from July 1977. So it obviously it linked and edited this um, uh, object module just fine and ran it, okay? So now we're gonna go back and use the ZOS compiler. So you can see here the procedure is much simpler because uh, the, the JCL is much simpler because we have a procedure. Um, on ZOS, uh, and so we just give it, we invoke it with class H, uh, message class H, class A. Um, let's give it a, a bigger region. Um, and then uh, in the step list, we have to mention which version of the compiler to use. So I think this is version 3.4. And then the, the sysin is the exact same program and with the same sysin, and the sys output formatting is also the same. So. Let's run this and see what happens. And this is going to be C. Uh, let's put the Z for the ZOS version. Okay, um, let's run it. Job 13, 16 here. And let's switch. Um, and here's the Z version. Okay, uh, let's go all the way to the bottom. Yes, the same, the same number of primes found, 1229. And so the funny thing here is to see that a modern COBOL compiler compiled a very ancient program uh, easily without any problems at all. Uh, as you can see here, this is Enterprise COBOL for ZOS 3.4.1. Um, and of course the output looks different. Um, it has some warnings, but uh, nothing major. And um, Produces a lot more output, more intricate output, um, and then we should have the this is the literal table, okay. And this is the binder, which in ZOS they they rename the linkage editor to a binder because it binds. I mean, it, it does slightly different thing, but it's compatible with with the old linkage editor. The only thing is it's called H-E-W-L instead of I-E-W-L. Um, 
And here is the output from the linkage editor. Obviously this is being run in 31-bit mode, uh, one big difference. Um, the other output was 24-bit. And, <clears throat> and here's the output. So now that, now let's go see the other one it was three cents of a second for the execution. Let's go and check how long this took. Um, go step. So this actually took longer. Okay, this look eight, eight uh, tenth of a second. And why is that? That's very interesting. It could be because the system was just busy doing something else. Uh, because this is a well, system request block. Um, So, oh no, this was CPU total, CPU time, and SRV was 0.2. We could try to run again to see if there's any variance. Uh, let's go here to the go step. Uh, this linkage editor, and here it is again. No, it is actually slower. Um, this is very interesting. It's more than double the time to execute it. I would think that this is because uh, um, this global compiler sets up a much more complex address space uh, before uh, the um, there's much more that it's being done in the environment setup before the program actually starts working. Um, I'm sure um, that for very long uh, execution times, this compiler must be faster. And the reason is that, of course, the modern compiler uses all the modern instructions on the CPU, which are more efficient than the old compiler, which doesn't know about all the uh, new instructions of uh, the Z architecture, obviously. And so um, I'm sure that in the long run, this is going to be uh, faster execution time. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if the compile step was much longer. So we have here a third of a second for the compilation. Let's go see um, the MBT compiler, how long the COBOL step took. Um, so let's see here. No, that also was <laughs> much faster. So uh, it looks like the MVT compiler in this case for this kind of source code is actually quite a bit more efficient um, than the modern ZOS system. Not criticizing here, I'm just saying I'm sure that the ZOS uh, system does much more in the background than uh, the MVT compiler. Um, I mean, you know, I'm sure the, what I want to say is I'm sure the enterprise Z, the ZOS enterprise global compiler does much more in the background than the MBT compiler does. Um, but uh, that this is very interesting. Um, on the other hand, the output from this compiler is much more elaborate. Um, so this is very interesting. Um, so we got the two compilers to work, um, same uh, results and um, and I remember we had a video just recently uh, when I did the video for MBS 3.8 for beginners where um, the, this COBOL uh, program wouldn't work with a number uh, of primes of 100. So let's see if this is still the case. Let's run this with 100. Let's see if this still fails. Just as a side exercise. Um, Nope, uh, this ran. Oh, I see what's going on here. Um, <laughs> the format of what it's reading in. Okay, this is how it has to be. Okay. Okay, bottom. So it found 20. So it worked with this compiler. Now let's see if this also works with the other compiler. Um, so we'll have to do it this way. Um, and before we go there, we have to go delete the um, load module. Just because of the way I ran this uh, JCL. Um, just to be extra sure that we're running the new version. Okay. Um, by the way, I was wondering in the previous video, 
um, how to see all the open um, screen sessions that I have. And so I was looking for the swap list. If you do that, it shows you a little window here and you can see all the uh, current sessions you have. And so this is an editing session, I, I believe. You can just put the cursor here. Okay, now that's this one, uh, swap list. And then this one will be the SDSF viewer, yep. Um, and then swap list. And this one is the editor. Okay, so let's go um, here and put in 0, 100. And I'm sure that this, quite sure that this will bomb out. This will not work. Um, T is for the MBT. Okay, uh, let's run this. Job 1320. You know, it actually ran. Let's see the bottom. I don't know why it wasn't running on MBS 3.8 with um, with a with a uh, input of 100. The program abends. Um, uh, there is a bug in there somewhere, but um, it does run on ZOS. So uh, something else we learned. Uh, so this is it. So this this all runs. Um, we have the various uh, COBOL compilers. Um, again, uh, this for me is just so beautiful. We're running 46 year old software here on a on the modern operating system and just imagine doing this with Windows I would never work um, and um, and so we we saw COBOL here if you have any more complex uh, workload that you want me to run uh, please send it my way in the comments below this video and I'll make maybe a video of uh, some more complex uh, COBOL source if, if you want me to other than that, we saw that this works just fine and I hope you had fun watching this video. If you like to please press on the thumbs up button. Um, I would urge you to consider subscribing to the channel to get notifications of future videos. And thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.